my first encounter uh, with the dugong was when we were actually looking for dolphins and, uh, and I saw this brownish animal without a dorsal fin and I thought, what is this? And then realized what they were. And the sailors used to say, dugongs are the mermaids of the sea. And uh, I still strongly believe that when I see them, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm watching mermaids swimming in the water. And uh, it's a beautiful thing to be able to, to work with them. It's very important to, uh, to save the dugongs because they are very unique species, both ecologically, but also they have a very strong traditional and cultural uh, value for so many communities across the globe. The dugong distribution spans across 46 countries from East Africa all the way to the Pacific Islands in Vanuatu and New Caledonia. Dugongs are feed on seagrass. The seagrass develops mostly in coastal areas and and so there is a strong overlap between the habitat being used by the dugongs and the people living along the coast. This is a great thing, but it also comes with a great risk. The key information or baseline information that's needed to conserve that, that iconic species is where are the animals? Where are the highest density of dugongs? And does that vary across space and time? And also looking at the threatening processes that may harm the dugong. So if we know there is a dugong hotspot in a certain place, we need to know whether that hotspot is under a certain threat or not. Once we know where dugongs are, we try to use dugongs as an umbrella species to help protect not only the dugongs, but the whole ecosystem that they rely on, that being the seagrass, but also all the species of fish or elasmobranchs that use seagrass um, meadows as nursery habitats. So my research mainly focuses on spatial ecology of dugong, so looking at distribution, habitat use, movement, and also abundance, so how many dugongs there are in a certain place. And for that, I use different tools and different cutting edge technology, such as aerial survey, whether it's in manned planes or using drones, but also using telemetry tools, so using GPS satellite tags that we um, fit on dugongs, also accelerometry tags uh, that inform us on the very fine scale movement of those animals. Catching dugongs is a bit like water bull riding. It's, it's very rough. Uh, an animal can weigh half a ton and it's very powerful. So you need to be very careful. It's something that not everyone um, can do. And, it's, uh, and safety is very important both for the animal and, and, uh, and the catching team. My research helps community uh, to, to conserve these species by putting research tools in their own hands and allowing them to do their own research in their own backyard to help protect their natural coastal natural resources. I've done a lot of community-based work, so in New Caledonia, uh, with working with Kanak people in Torres Strait, working with Torres Strait Islanders in trying to track animals, know where they are, in, in order to inform better management and better in some way, in some areas, harvesting management. So for example, in Torres Strait, people traditionally hunt dugongs, but they were interested in knowing where to hunt and where to not hunt in order to make sure that the, the population is maintained in the long run. The human aspect is working with communities is priceless. You, as a, as a researcher, you, you are doing a lot of research and there's a lot of office work being done, but going out there with the community, you realize how important it is to, to, to talk with people and to learn not just from the Western science, but also the, all the traditional knowledge that's so important in making our science much, much better in informing conservation. I hope the research that I do has an impact on both on, on policy and conservation of dugongs, but also um, increasing awareness around the animal and uh, making people realize that we live in a very fragile ecosystem and dugongs are part of it and we need to be able to, to live together.